Welcome to the Momentum Multiply Titan Show, where we bring you all the updates about your favorite team. We've been up to a lot in this past month, and here's the lineup for today's episode. The Momentum Multiply Titans players reflect on the recent SA20 competition. The team reconvenes for the four-day series continuation. And finally, we learn about Supersport Park Stadium. The inaugural SA20 Crickets saw 16 players from the Titans as well as some members of their coaching staff participating in the competition. This is testament to the quality of players that have come from the Titans Cricket Pipeline and further gone to make a name for themselves nationally and internationally. I thought it was a, was a good, good uh, tournament. I thought it was a good competition. Uh, I think um, the quality was really good. I think that every game was pressure game. The competitiveness of, of, of teams was really good. And I think, you know, everybody got something out of this tournament. And I think South Africa will be in a better space and a better place going forward. Um, having to be under pressure every game that you play, it only bodes well for us going forward as a, as a country. And I think we can handle a lot those those pressure moments a lot better going forward as well. It was great. Um, obviously the first year of it and all the players were excited to be a part of it and once the tournament is now done and we've had a few days to reflect, I think um, not just myself but all the players that were involved thoroughly enjoyed it and, and it was um, yeah fantastic to be a part of. So that's the strange part. Um, your, your normal teammates now become guys that you play against and um, but I suppose it's kind of normal if, if you look at all the leagues around the world you play with some guys here and in the next league you play against them so um, it's unfortunately one of those but um, all in all the, the comp was played in good spirits and, and everyone enjoyed themselves. The competition will go a very long way in exposing our domestic talent to the international market and also playing cricket at a higher level. I think it's important to recognize the fact that we were scattered, um, so all of them went to different environments and it's all about taking all the positives out of those environments and bringing back into the Titans uh, change room and see how best we can use those practices to better ourselves. You know, they, we can't use everything, but we need to be smart in terms of how we um, choose which to use to, to benefit ourselves. And I think, you know, the chats around um, how other coaches do their things, how other players prepare, you know, because you had international players from England, New Zealand, all those places. So it's, 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 only, it's only good for you to try and find out what, are, what makes them tick uh, from a prep point of view, how do they approach matches, what's a game plan, you know, and then you just never know. You take one point, that could be the game changer and that could be the thing that elevates you to, to, to greater heights. That's a nice shot. Really well done that. Clarsen is a wonderful striker and he's just given us a show there. No, for me it was it was very, very, very nice learning from, from a lot of different players from around the world, you know. Um, especially we had a lot of English players in the sunrises, so I learned a few things from them. Um, and um, our bowling coach, Dale Stain, um, learned a few things from him. Um, I was talking to him about um, different, op different options on the field, off the field. Just this general general chats, um, but uh, I learned a lot more off the field because I, I didn't play much. Um, I didn't play one or two games, but yeah, I learned a lot off the field with uh, with Dale and, and the management, um, and obviously from other players. But um, the, the whole the whole competition itself was was really good. Oh, hello, hello, goodbye. An absolute cork of a delivery from Lazard Williams. First up, there ain't a lot Timber Bavuma can do about this. Yeah, it was good. It's, it's great exposure for all the local players from South Africa. Um, you've got some incredibly good players that were part of the tournament and they bring their experience and all their knowledge and, and all of that uh, as local players, we get to sponge off of that. So in terms of growth and, and fast-tracking careers, I think it was, it was a great concept and um, yeah, it was delivered perfectly as well. Shot, shot, oh yes. Yes, what about that to bring up a hundred? Did you hear the screams? It wasn't Markram screaming, it was his partner Stubbs because he's that happy for him. Semi-final. Team was great. We, we had a great bunch of guys that um, like to compete and, and like to get into battles and 
um, but still all in all in the good spirit of the game and um, those sort of attitudes and the energies that they brought were, were probably some really important ingredients to, to us doing quite well. So um, a great bunch of guys with, with great management, a great coach and um, yeah, the, the, the month with them was, was really cool to be a part of. He's gone over the top this time, has he gone far enough? He has gone far enough, is there a catch to round things off? No, there's not. My goodness, how good is this? They have now won. Outstanding work from the Sunrise Eastern Cape. This has been a magnificent performance. Winning was great. Um, I suppose all of us sportsmen, we, we don't take losing too well, so um, we were fortunate to win, but um, came across every team and, and every game that you play in the comp is um, a great team with, with world beaters in their team and I think that's what makes the competition so good. A bit strange to play against Pretoria in the final, obviously it's um, normally my home team and the team that I play for but um, yeah, I think a, a lot of good happened from them and they sort of set the standard for the competition in terms of finishing first on the log and um, quite comfortably as well so uh, yeah, Pony and his team did a great job. Terrific stuff from the Sunrisers Eastern Cape. They are the Betway SA20 winners of the very first season. Congratulations to them. They will be parting and celebrating with the Orange Army all the supporters around the country. This has been a win that they can be very proud of. For me, it was really good. I, I, I learned a lot from running a team, uh, running your, your support staff. Um, and, and, and you know, communication is one of those things that you know I saw play a big role. Uh, the clarity in which communication is done was was really really good. Um, so there was some big big learnings from our side. How you communicate with players, you know, when players are down, because you you know you're dealing with players that have got some sort of like experience in the game. The whole experience was was a ball, to be honest with you. And the travelling was a bit tough. Uh, that was. That was probably one of the things that, yeah, I was thinking, geez, every week you up, every week you just up and down. But otherwise, you know, it was worthwhile. Yeah, definitely. It was nice to have um, most of our players uh, involved in this comp. Um, a, couple guys, a couple guys missed out, but I'm sure in the near, near future, um, a few more guys will, will, will be involved. Being re represented like that was, was immense and having our captain, or Aiden as captain for the Sunrisers lift the trophy, a Titans player as well, so it means a lot, heck of a lot for us and going forward hopefully we get more players in. The Sky Blues flag was definitely flown high in the SA20. The players certainly displayed courage, focus and endurance in the campaign and we can't wait for the second edition of the competition. The team reconvenes for a four-day series continuation after being separated for a month due to the recently concluded SA20 competition. The Titans will want to start strong in the resumption of the competition to give themselves a good chance at the business end. Boys have come back now for the SA20. Um, yes, uh, it is back to reality like for some of the boys because coming from SA20, like the fanfare, the crowds and everything, and to come back now, you know, like a four-day cricket, like the disciplines of four-day cricket, it's something like that, like they just have to adapt to as quickly as they can. Yes, we started on Monday. We played a, 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 like a two-day like friendly game, which went very, very well. And then today, I mean, like, you know, like, I, like that whole squad is here. And uh, yes, we've prepared well, and we do realize where's the season at for us. And it's important that we finish well as well. Body's feeling fine, luckily. T20 cricket is not too sort of physically demanding, so the bodies are good. I think mentally we'll always be up for it to represent Titans in a four-day game is always um, a big opportunity for us and a um, big opportunity for the rest of the squad to, to show what they're all about. And ultimately, we, we are chasing the, the four-day trophy and um, it's exciting to now be a part of that. I've had some time to you know, work on a few things and I feel that I'm then they're about with, with what I'm trying to be working on and I think as a team we, we had a good prep week, we had a, a little game in the week and I think we got out what we needed to get out so um, we've come in today and today was a really good net session for everyone, there was a lot of good challenges out there and you know some really good battles and I think everyone challenged each other and yeah I think everyone is in a good space. It's not always easy to trans transition so quickly but I think the most important thing is four day cricket's all about keeping it simple and the basic, basics of the game. 
So I think the, the biggest language that Manda has been pushing for the guys is just to fall back in love with the basics of the game, which is leaving the ball, blocking the ball, hitting us uh, in the area consistently. So it's, it's for the guys to get back into the mentality of keeping it as simple as possible and it's not your, your flashy cricket, the one we all enjoyed in the SA20, guys scooping and doing all of these amazing things. But again, the biggest message is to fall in love with the basics of the game again. The coaches are pleased to have a full group of players at training, as well as those with national contracts. Quite fortunate, um, like this coming week, we've got a full, a, a, a clean bill of health. And then also like our pro tier players are like available, you know, so like we're very, very excited to see guys like Dean Elgar, you know, back, guys like Eden Makram back after, you know, like, like his team, you know, like took the SA20. So yes, it is exciting times, you know, for us. And the different energies, you know, like, like when the pro tier players are here, like the energies are quite different and everybody is fit. Uh, yes, our fitness trainer as well has made sure that, that everyone has been doing like their own programs as well. And the, yeah, that then, uh, yeah, that then I think everyone is up to speed with the basic level like where we are in terms of our fitness. It's always awesome to have those guys back. The amount of experience and skill that they bring to the setup, um, I think is always awesome. So yeah, when you have those guys back, you only can take the field with a lot of positive energy and a lot of confidence going into the game. So yeah, I think it's a big boost for our squad and it's going to set us well for the next four games. Especially with this format, basics is key. So you've got to just, it's kind of your, your normal target bowling and your normal basics drills work and whatever, just to make sure you're getting into good positions. Um, once you start facing bowlers, it's just trying to take that into the net. It's always, you know, it takes time. It takes maybe a couple of net sessions and whatever, but sometimes you don't have a lot of time. So you've got to make that transition extremely quickly. Luckily for a lot of the guys, we've done it before. Um, we had to go into the T20 comp earlier in the year and then straight into the four day in the next week. So. Yes, uh, it, it, it's always tricky and challenging, but I think we know what to expect and we know what to do. We're going all out for these for these four games. I think it's important for us to to win all of them or as many as we can. So yeah, you can expect 100% effort. And again, for us to deliver the standard of cricket that we've been del delivering for the last couple of years, I think we, we as players hold ourselves in this unit at a, at a high standard. And uh, it's our responsibility every time when we take the field to go out there and deliver those standards. I think we're sitting in a good position. I mean, like, there's a big chance for us to uh, get over the line in this competition. But for us, I think we've got four more games left. Yes, like, but our focus is on this week's game, which is like Pal Rocks. Yeah, yeah, then we've got Deben as well, and then we've got PE. And then we've got one more game here at home as well. So uh, yes, like the key focus for us, you know, as a squad, is to take it one game at a time. Um, yes, I think uh, if we play like the cricket, like that we can play, you know, I really think we'll get over the line. So yes, we're excited and uh, it will be nice to like, take another trophy, you know, home. Moving from the shortest format of SA20 to four day cricket, the Sky Blues focus will be to stick to the basics, back their skills and remain disciplined throughout the campaign. It's time for a quick ad break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more exciting cricket news. Supersport Park is the jewel in Centurion's cricketing crown and a fortress for when the protests play here. The stadium made history when it hosted its first ever Boxing Day test between South Africa and Pakistan in the year 2018 and then again in 2019 when we hosted South Africa and England. Welcome one and all, wherever you may be, it's the third KFC T20 International, South Africa and England doing battle once again. We come to you live from Supersport Park in Centurion. Look, it's an honor to host international matches at Supersport Park and it's a big honor to host uh, the pro tiers in a test match. Um, but it's a lot of work. It's, it's five days in a row, a lot of uncertainty because test matches now seldom actually goes for five days, so it's difficult to, to market it. But, you know, you have hospitality for at least the first three days. You also have uh, VIPs that needs to be catered for, for five days. So it is a quite congested 
um, activities um, day after day. Um, but look, we've just dealt with the SA20. That uh, was a lot of six matches in a short period of time. But it is a challenge with uh, you know early start and uh, a late end every day for, for the staff for five days in a row or four days, uh, depending on how long the test will, will go. Ground staff works really, really um, hard because they've got to prepare the, the ground in the morning, cut, lawn, all the other logistics, and then they've got to wrap up at night. The admin staff's the same. They've got to run the VIP suites. Um, a lot of work, but again, we're thankful for the opportunity to host, host these matches. It's been a very, very busy year. The SA20, our domestic um, series, and, and then, of course, after that, all we got two back-to-back -back T20s uh, against the West Indies. Um, but again, it's such a privilege to host international cricket. That's wide, and it's also out. He's chased a wide one. Chris Morris is into the attack and he's picked up a wicket. That's a good catch in the end. South Africa will be breathing a huge sigh of relief out there in the middle. For international cricket, obviously security gets beefed up because we're moving into a different category where you've got internationals, where you've got uh, certain obligations uh, that we need to meet. Uh, there's uh, a lot of uh, SAP's presence in the stadium. There's a lot of uh, security from a player's point of view, from a match official's point of view, and the requirements of uh, the POMA areas. We beef that up quite uh, intensively to ensure that uh, uh, things run smoothly, to ensure that uh, the stadium is secure. So I would say, compared to a domestic match, we do have more security beefed up compared to uh, domestic matches. Big shot, third man in play. Shamsi takes a catch. Hendricks gets his man. A wicket dearly wanted by South Africa. The requirements actually comes from the ICC. So, you know, there's minimum standards that we got to adhere to. A lot of people involved uh, during COVID, we realized it's more than 500 people that's actually attending a match. That's without any um, crowd or fans being allowed. So also gave us a bit of an insight of how many people, they all got to be fed, they all got to be accredited, they all got to go through a gate and they're all functional in uh, some way or another. And then it's wonderful to uh, invite fans back, but that's, you know, five days in a row. The test uh, is particularly challenging because it's a midweek test. Uh, we only got one weekend, so additional marketing effort goes into it. But I guess your biggest challenge is it's, uh, it's the one day after the other, um, you, you know, so it could be five days in a row and, and that's the challenge. There is a bit of um, fatigue or staff fatigue and they, like I said, they just came through the SA20 20 leagues, so we'll be drinking a lot of coffee, um, but you know, that's that's what we do. Supersport Park is a multi-purpose stadium. Its primary purpose is hosting cricket matches and fans. But when that's not happening, the team is on a drive to commercialise the stadium through events. So Supersport Park caters to a variety of clients, from your businesses and your corporates who would be hosting conferences, events, team buildings, to individuals in a personal capacity who may want to host a special occasion or a surprise occasion for loved ones, and you have your biggest staple clients in the industries, uh, music, arts, culture, who would want to roll out a festival or a concert on a larger scale at the stadium. Post-COVID, Supersport Park has really enjoyed um, an upsurge in its events uptake. Um, it, it, does, it does help uh, that we're an open, open air venue, which is always nice to have. Um, but we found that it's picked up and gained momentum post-COVID, which has been very enjoyable. Supersport Park is a family-friendly stadium, safe for kids with security up to scratch. Yeah, a lot of children actually comes to the ground and I think it is the layout um, of, of the stadium. It's, it's, it's uh, grass embankments, it's difficult to put a kid and a young child in a, in a bucket chair for, for a couple of hours. Test cricket's the whole day. Um, you know, as kids we all played on the grass, so the, the park provides you that as well. Um, 
and, and I think that's why we have so many families and young families and young kids coming out. But you know, that to me is, is the character of the, of the ground and the people attending matches at uh, Supersport Park. Very happy with that, six of three. And that could be his first wicket. It is, it's width. Rizwan goes after it, but all he can do is hold out to Dalo on the fence. There's a number of activations depending on themes that we, we are hosting for uh, uh, different tours. For example, we've got a Castle Corner, we've got a Bry area that offers a great experience for our fans who can bring whatever they want to bring into Bry. Uh, there we've got a gin deck, of which is a latest offering at the stadium. We've got uh, another deck on the other side of the stadium of which we bring in a different supplier that uh, does different party themes depending, as I do say, on the theme of the day or the theme of the tour. We've got recently uh, a, a nice pump track at the back for the kids, pump track at the back for the kids, whereby they can ride bikes, which is an added experience for the fans. Oh, that's picked up. That's picked up and it's dispatching in the crowd. The Sixers are raining right now. Well, you'll see most of the Sixers are lanes balls. You saw that fabulous hook shot. So the business that we are fortunate to gain outside of the cricket calendar um, is usually in the winter months, leading up to the pre-season months. Um, it is a limited period, winter being what it is and cold. Uh, but we do try to squeeze in what we can in the summer and the spring seasons. Of course, that has to be with respect to the cricket window of opportunity. Um, but it's all year round. Unfortunately, it does happen that we do have to decline a lot of interest um, from, from potential clients due to the cricket calendar. Uh, but we do enjoy those that we're able to retain off of the season. Close and given. Bruce Upton for things that's straight enough. Midweek test, um, CSI has, has come up with, I thought, a very uh, innovative campaign to allow us to do a career expo, um, and that would uh, have exhibitions from tertiary institutions and some, um, you know, work related opportunities uh, for people visiting it. So we invite, uh, especially school kids, to come and come and visit us and visit our career expo. Supersport Park is a great venue uh, for both cricket and non-cricket events. It brings a different vibe uh, to um, uh, its patrons and would like to encourage people to bring more events here. Come and watch the cricket here. It's different from any other stadium. It's a unique stadium, so can't compare stadiums. Each and every stadium has got its own different uh, uniqueness about it. But yeah, come to Supersport Park, come visit us, come and have fun with us. We have unfortunately reached the end of our show. Make sure that you stay updated by visiting our social media platforms. Until then, see you next time.